Okay. Then I'm going to jump up here. Now I'm moving between the positions. So the scale that I'm actually in is uh, right here. I'm really playing in my B, what looks like my B minor pentatonic position, which is also our D major pentatonic position. Those are relatives, same thing. So the way this chord progression starts out, we're thinking it's in D major. It's got D major, it's got G major, it's got B minor, all groovy. We're still in D major, that's fine. But I go to a C there. So when we've got D, C, D major, C major, and G major, that tells us that we're actually not in the key of D major. We're actually in the key of G major, but because our tone center is D, we're playing a D mixolydian scale here. So that tells us that just like other famous songs that are in with these three chords, like Sweet Home Alabama is, is a perfect example. That's got D, C, and G, but it has a mixolydian flavor. So we, we're doing the same thing here with our D mixolydian scale. But the neat thing is D major pentatonic actually fits over either D major or D mixolydian. So we can stick with our D major pentatonic and be pretty safe over either one. So most of this you know, solo is going to be based around our uh, D major pentatonic scale. So I go up here. So this lick, I'm doing a hammer on um, from my, basically my uh, 14th fret to there, second string, a little slide up, then back down. Now I do a same bend like I did here and catch with my pinky. So I'm bending that up, hit my pinky, and then let it go. Do a pull off there. And then I go to this note, and that is where my mixolydian comes in because that is my C note, right? Which is my flat seven of D. So that's, you know, it's all groovy here. We're basically D major, D major pentatonic, I should say here. But that note is what takes me into mixolydian. If I went. But that's the one that makes it mixolydian. So we're going to stick with that one. Then we've got a lick here. And you'll notice the phrasing on this. I'm doing bits and pieces. Sort of the, the call and response phrasing where I play one lick, have a little space, do another little lick. You know, our, our call and response or call and answer as we call it sometimes doesn't have to be the exact same thing. It just means there's a phrase, then there's another phrase, there's a phrase, another phrase. That's what we've got here. So once again, this lick, bending at the 15th fret, and I stop it. So I don't, go, I don't let it come back down, and I don't hold it out. It's stop, and then coming off air. When I do that, I'm basically going my 12th fret. And a bend there, ended on the bend. And then the, now, coming from there, next thing that I'm going to do is kind of an interesting lick. Because the next lick, I've actually got my first finger barred across the second string and the third string. So with this, I'm pedaling basically off of this. I'm playing third string, seventh fret, and then I do a pull off from on the second string from eighth to seventh. And the back of that note, tenth fret, back of that note. Very common southern rock type lick. You know, you'll hear what all your southern rock bands, Allman Brothers, you know, Marshall Tucker, lots of different bands. Molly Hatchet from back in the day, all these bands would use a lot of these. All right? So, common thing, we're doing it here off of our D note, pedaling off of our D. And then I've got this first finger barred down across all three of these strings because then my next lick, I'm holding this down and just going from my high D note, the octave up, I'm doing a pull off. Just walking right down. Then we do it just a bend. And a 
slide up, which is an octave of this. Once again, the call and answer thing. And now I do the same technique here as I did down here where I'm holding a note down and pedaling off of that one. So I'm holding my, my second string down at the 12th fret and going from 10, 12, 14. And then I just go basically a, a simple scale lick up here from 15 to 14 to 12 and then end on my D note. We like to end on the D note here because that also keeps it melodic. It keeps it uh, very tonic. So now I'm going to bend my second string at the 10th fret up a full step and back down to there. And then I'm the ending lick. I'm actually mirroring what the rhythm is doing. Um, if you remember, the rhythm guitar is playing a basically down there. So I'm going to do the same thing up here and doing hammer-ons from the seventh fret. Now I can bend that up, or I can just pull it down. Either way works the same thing. So it's the same lick, but I'm doing the same thing as the rhythm. Um, that gives it a sort of that octave feel because I'm doing it an octave up. Once again, sort of sounds like reminds us of that twin guitar southern assault. <laughs> 